Um, this is forum class, and uh, I'm waiting for somebody to show up. Hmm. I'm definitely in form. Five minutes in the class, nobody's shown up. There's complete excitement about the class.
Hmm. Well, I guess I'm going to pause this video. Okay, it's uh, quarter to ten. Still nobody's here. I'm pausing it again. Just from my regular email to you? No, if you're going to email it, I want you to email it from um, from Canvas email, which you don't have. It doesn't work, I think. No, uh, I, found, I, I have it. Just do it through Canvas. That's just fine. Okay. That way we have a record of it. All right? Okay. So, um, so let's see here. Um, I'm going to pin this video. We're going to look at another piece of music right now. <laughs> Beethoven's uh, um, First Symphony. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, share a screen with you. So let's see. Do, do, do. All right, so you should be seeing something that says Beethoven Symphony Number One in C major, correct? Correct. All right, so let's we're gonna click on this. Command minus minus, and it's gonna be pretty small in general. All right, because uh, that's the only way. Let me see if I can plus it up a little bit. Nope. Uh, let's go view. Um, zoom to fit. That, that, that isn't fitting. <laughs> View. Oh well. I'm just going to have okay. to deal with it the other way. All right. So this is uh, Symphony Number no. 1, and it features a 15 measure, very slow introduction. All right. Okay. Um, of course, I can't even read the measures here, and and it is not the exact same as my score. But right here is the pickup, and I'm just going to uh, put a little line there. Uh, boom. Click, and. Uh, let's push this over here and push this over here a little bit. So that's the pickup into the main theme, all right? And we know that mostly because usually introductions are independent introductions and, and don't come in with the read. Okay. So, um, See, I'd make it bigger at some times, like here I can make it bigger, but I can't make it bigger as we're playing, because then the next page is, is a full score. So uh, we're going to start listening to this. Now, th this, this introduction is very controversial on, on what key it's in, all right? Uh, this is symphony number uh, one in C major, okay? So a lot of people are going to say it's completely in G. Well. I've analyzed it a little bit different where we're having a couple of applied chords in the key of C and then it pivots to the key of G. And uh, basically we have a five, seven of four. Okay. And then we have four, just so you know, and I'm just telling you, this is five, seven of four. This is the four. All right. And then we okay. have a five, seven chord right here that pivots to become a two seven chord. Um, well, no, the five seven chord, and then five seven goes to six as a deceptive type of maneuver. And um, that six pivots to be two and it's in G right here. And it, and it, and it, and it hangs around in G. Um, till measure eight, let's see. Uh, right about here, it switches back to the key of C, just so you know, and then it stops right here. So let's listen to that independent introduction. Oh, I got somebody else. I got more people. Yay! Oh, let me get my... Fred Jacoby and Courtney. Yeah, I'm working on it. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad somebody's showed up because uh, Remy showed up about three minutes ago. 
my I like my alarm went off and then I was like, okay, I got still got time. And I went back to sleep. I just gotta find the page that our class is on. Here it is right here. This is the 29th. So I want to remind everybody that we have a recital at 11 o'clock. And you should have got a link to that recital if you're not going to attend it in person. Okay. Uh, so Bremi's here. Uh, Jacoby's here. And um, Mr. Greer is here. All right. So we're about to listen to the introduction of Beethoven's First Symphony, and you should see Beethoven's First Symphony up there on the screen. I'm sorry, I can't make it any larger. Um, so, give me the opportunity to figure out how to get back to where I want to be. Um, it is right here. Okay, this is the introduction. I'll pause it after the introduction. Um, but it's the introduction and um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to share um I'm going to share a different screen because that this has the score on it also. All right? And then I can enlarge it and maybe it will help out. All right. So let's see. Oh, you should be seeing this YouTube score. Yes, no, maybe. Yes. All right. Here we go. All right, so this is the introduction. Um, and as I explained to Remy, it, 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 this introduction is slow, and it's an independent introduction. And uh, there's a lot of controversy about what key it's in. I've analyzed it with a, with a couple of applied chords right here, and then it pivots right here on this chord, the key of G, and it does that for about four more measures and then pivots back. It's only 15 measures long, but it goes very slow. Here we go. I'm gonna start it and stop it. Tell me if it's too loud. And can you hear me when, it, when it's playing, like now? It's cool to me. Could you hear me talk? Yep. Was it too loud or too soft? You, you might turn it up a little bit more. Turn what up a little bit more? The My, music. The music? Yeah. Okay. Is that all right? Excuse me. Is that all right? Is that, Is that all right, guys? Is that too loud? It's fine with me. All right. We're going to start it then. All right. So, again, it's going to go pretty slow here. I wish I could get rid of this thing. I can't. All right. Opening two chords, and then... And then this is a deception. This is the pivot chord. We're in G. theme. I'm going to pause it for a second here and back it up just a little bit. So what we got here is we've got a five chord and it's, it's a grand pause, a five chord in the key of C and then it has the pickup right down here da -da 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 -da, to the main theme and you can tell it's the main theme because it has uh, repeat signs right here and this is an independent introduction. Okay so 
Now that's different than that Mozart piece we we had, which we kind of had an introduction in Ina Klein and Knock music. The first movement that went dee 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 dee, dee and it played it at the beginning of the development, and it played it at the beginning of the recapitulation, and it played it at the repeat of the exposition also. And it's kind of more introduc introduction uh, um, than thematic material, because immediately following that, then we got thematic material. Uh, so this, again, is an independent introduction, and I'm just going to back it up just a little bit here, and we're going to continue forward. The main theme starts here. Okay. These, by the way, this is flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon. Um, this is horn. Uh, let me just verify that what key it's in. Um, well, the clarinet's in the key of C, just so you know. So this clarinet's in the key of C. Um, the horn is in the key of C also. So the pitches that are there are actually are the pitches being played. I think they sound down an octave. Uh, but below that, you got a, um, a trumpet in the key of C also, and uh, then you have timpani, all right? Um, and the timpani is generally just tonic and dominant. Here you can see uh, do and so, do and so, all right? Here we go. We're somewhere in here. We're right here, and here it is, the pickup. Okay, we just had a really large cadence there. That was the end of the first theme, and I'm going to share a different window to you now. Um, so now I'm hoping that um, we are seeing um, just a, a little breakdown of it, the, uh, uh, the graph. Do you see the graph right here? Yes. All right, so we had uh, C, and it's, I wrote various keys. It really just went to G, and then it went back to C with a big half cadence. That's the introduction here. The first theme was measures 18 through 25, which was A, which ended in half cadence, and then B uh, measures 26 through 32, because it wasn't really the same thing. All right, so that's how we get A and B as opposed to A and A prime, which often it was, which we saw in the Mozart. Uh, so that we could be, and then we had that big, big cadence, perfect authentic cadence, and then, then something else happened, and it was, it was just completely different. It was going somewhere, and, and that's how you can figure out where the transition is, really. And, and this really features a big cadence. Okay, um, sometimes they're not so obvious. So then you get, we get the transition that's basically just going to take us from one key to another. Sometimes it's a thematic transition. Sometimes it will take material. From the introduction sometimes we'll have its own theme um, and when I say thematic maybe it's taking material from the first theme all right so there's various ways it can be in it or it can be just something completely different um, so I'm gonna stop the share and I'm gonna give you a new share back to the window we were on so we should be looking at Beethoven and I'm gonna back it up just a little bit here Big cadence, transition. This is the key confirmation area. Okay, so again, that was the key confirmation area saying, I'm in this key, and he was basically going 5 1 or 1 5, 5 1, 5 1, 5 1, over and over and over, saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. We are right now on the second theme, which is going to be different than the first theme. Um, unlike, um, I think we listened to the Haydn a couple of days ago. Uh, unlike the Haydn, that was the same theme in the second theme. This second theme is going to be more lyrical, uh, usually lighter in character, all right? 
Not that the first theme wasn't lyrical. Here we go, right on the second theme. So we just we just listen to the second theme there and then it goes into something else and it's going to go into either a closing section or immediately into some sort of codetta. All right. So um, I'm going to reshare uh, this right here. And basically what we heard was the transition went from C to G. We had a big five one at the end of that. And then and then we have C and then we have C prime again. All right, so C and C prime. This ended uh, five one, and this was also five one. It was a PAC, and it alighted with an elision with the beginning of what I am calling the closing group or some sort of closing theme. Now you might not think it's that; you might think it's a codetta. All right, so it just all depends, but it is pretty thematic here. So we have this elision that when it goes five one starts out right here in the closing group. So I'm going to reshare that last screen. All right, and I'm going to back it up just a little bit here. So you maybe can hear the elision. Uh, maybe, it'll, here we go. This is a C prime now. Here comes the elision. thematic here. We have a first and second ending here. In theory, we're going to be going back to the beginning. This is the beginning. Confirmation area. Second theme. Cadence. C prime. Elision. Closing section. Big cadence, Codetta. Okay, so now we're on the second ending of this. Um, and it's going to bring us into the development section. And the development section just, you know, starts in A, okay? And about two chords later, it pivots to D. About two chords later, it pivots to G. Um, 
about two chords later, it pivots to C minor, and then it hangs in C minor for a few a few measures, maybe like about four measures, goes to F. But that first whole section is just a modulatory sequence-like area where it touches on various keys, all right? So um, it, it's not exactly a sequence like we know it, but you're going to hear the sequential material within it. So, so be aware of that. And we're just going to play through this, this right here, and I'm going to maybe point out some keys. Um, but eventually it arrives in B flat for a while, for quite a while, and then it eventually goes to E flat. Um, eventually goes to A minor for a while and then it pivots from A minor back to C major to get into the um, the recapitulation. So here we go. We're on the second ending, which should be, we're like right here and it's going to flip to the next page and the second ending is on the next page. <laughs> That's the transition material. right now. Second theme in the tonic key. Okay, um, this is the entire symphony, so I did have to stop it. Um, Resharing this other part right here. Let's see. Um, 
So I've only actually put the exposition in here, but again, similar to what I did in the last piece, you could write, you, you should be able, you should be writing a development section out, talking about the keys, maybe talking about some of the uh, things that the composer expands upon, because almost everything he has in the development is from someplace earlier in the symphony. Uh, and you should just focus on, on certain things, like there was this da -da -dum, da -da -dum, da -da -dum type of type of action that he was doing over and over, and you just find where that is. And, and you kind of just look at it through, through that lens. And then, of course, in the recapitulation, and I know I keep repeating this, but I really got to get it through. In the recapitulation, we're generally going to be in the key of C major in this key, or the home key. So then you have a transition that might actually maybe transition to another key for a slight bit, but ends up back in the key of C, so it doesn't really go anywhere. And then you get the second theme in the home key against C. Now it could be C minor, for instance, um, but the home key is still C because C is C is C. I I don't know how to explain that any better. Doesn't as long as your your root note is C, any of the the different modes that you use are still in the key of C. So and then um, if he if then maybe the closing group is going to continue to be in the key of C if he does uh, play it. And then sometimes, um, and then you have a coda or codetta in this case. If it's a final movement, you might have the codetta followed by a real coda, all right? In this case, there's kind of a codetta and a coda, but it's considered a codetta because it's internal to the entire work. Do we understand what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah, let me rephrase it. I think I said that. I think I said yeah, that. a little bit better? Yeah, I, I said that a little bit wrong. I'm going to go back to the codetta, all right? Um, it, it, it completes the movement, the codetta, and actually within this Beethoven piece, he played the codetta, but then he puts the coda on at the end. So there is a coda, and I just said that wrong. I'm sorry about that. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat the, um, the recapitulation. All right. The recapitulation in this case is in C, called the home key. Okay, so he's going to play the main theme. All right. Then he's going to do the transition. Then he's going to play the second theme. Then he's going to play the... the um, closing theme group if you had one and then he's going to do that codetta most likely and then he probably is going to tack something on the end to make a coda out of it all right the coda in this case is very short now this is beethoven this is early beethoven please understand that as beethoven continues forward his code coda the, the coda at the end of, of pieces become very, very large and almost are known as a second development section. That's not this. That's other things. If you've ever listened to Beethoven's Ninth Symphony that goes on for an hour, uh, he has the choral finale at the end of it, and it just goes on and on and on. So it's really um, quite large. Um, but anyways, so... The recapitulation, everything is in the tonic key usually, or at least in the home key of C in this case. So some of the things that composers will do is let's say um, they repeated, uh, they, they played something in the first theme and then repeated the whole thing. Oftentimes they don't need to do that. They'll shorten that and throw it away. Sometimes they won't even play the second theme or they'll just play a little part of it and then weave it, all right? Or in this case, he actually played the second theme, both, both, uh, both the, because the second theme is eight measures long, followed by another eight measures, and he played both of them. I, I would have thought he might have not. I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly what he did with the first theme, all right? Um, but the first theme was um, um, eight measures long, I believe, and uh, it was, uh, let me see, was it eight measures long? Uh, uh, no, it's actually, uh, like, uh, 12 measures long. Um, oh, uh, 12, 13, 
You're 25, yeah. And so one seems to be longer than the other, all right? Then another reason why I called it A and B. So, so, so you're writing a paper, and the most important thing you can do is, is tell me what you're going to tell me about it. You know, you could tell me what this is. So, so for instance, uh, I'm talking about the introduction. The introduction is measures one through 12 and ends on a half cadence, okay? Uh, and then you can blab, blab, blab about it, all right? And you're telling me. Then the first theme, the first theme consists of two periods in contrasting constructions, um, blah, blah, blah. Then you, you do it, you do it similar to that page 72 or whatever. And you need to make that statement, all right? And then you can tell me, oh, the melody starts out in the violins, goes to the flutes, and the flutes are doubling, blah, 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 blah. Put all your blah, blah, blah stuff in there. But you told me what you're going to tell me about. Then when you get to the next part, which is the transition, you say the transition goes from measures 34 through 52, and it goes from C to the key of G, and it ends on a, in this case, an authentic cadence. I can't remember if it was a perfect authentic cadence because I didn't write that. Um... And then you can tell me, you know, what did he use in there? He used this stuff from this measure over here, and, and, and he expanded on it, or used some of this stuff, so on. And then you go on to the next part. So the second theme, which is right here, I didn't write second theme over the top of it, it's C and C prime. Uh, okay. The second theme consists of uh, two phrases in um, parallel construction, that's kind of what this is, C and C prime, and there are, there are eight measures, uh, I believe, 53 to 61, yeah. Uh, 61 to 77, no. They're not the same length, all right? So, uh, but it is C and C prime. And, and so you just fit that into that, that, that little sentence in, on page 71 or 72, where he actually italicizes the things that... Um, you would you would change like how many measures if it's uh, contrasting construction or parallel construction so on and so forth and then you can tell me all about it okay but that's the main thing you got to say this uh, if you just start blabbing away at everything everyone's going to be lost including yourself and you can't do that without making this all right you need to make one for the development make one for the recapitulation all right the development, you probably concentrate on some things like key areas and the thematic material that's been worked out, all right, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, Greer, did you did you understand that? Because I know you 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 said to me, um, can you re explain that better? Was that a better explanation? Hmm. Hmm. All right. Um, Jacoby, how about you? Did you understand that? Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Bremi? Yes. All right. Jacoby, you're on campus, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Greer, uh, you're on campus. I've seen you. Mm -hmm. Oh, are you trying to ask me? I was like, why? What? I was like, you ain't asked me if I understood. I felt left out. I like, no, I did. I did ask you. You were first. Yeah. And I waited and waited yeah. and waited, and you never responded. I didn't hear that. Okay, that's all right. Now listen, and then I'm going to ask you now. Did, did was because you asked, you said it first, and I said, okay, was that a better explanation of, of what goes on in this? We're particularly talking about the recapitulation at that time. Yeah, once you broke it down and just pretty much explained to me how everything fell in line, then it started clicking in my head better. Okay, good. And you're on campus, correct? Correct. All right, I'm sharing a new screen here. Um, new screen. Mm. Going back to this Google Chrome thing, I'm going to escape out of this. And I'm going to go here. And you should now be seeing our, our modules, right? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. All right, so I've just now published this analytical paper. All right, it's, it's form chapter 11, or it's form module 11. It says chapter nine, Sonata, and then it says analytical paper, if you need to look for it. 
all right? So here it is right here. So I originally had this certain date in the syllabus and I've changed that date. I've extended it over the weekend because I'm now I'm realizing that people have their juries on that day and all kinds of other things. And it gives you three complete weekends to work on this. So um, here we go. This is, this is what it is. It's Mozart symphony number 40, the fourth movement. And here are the details of the paper right here. And then there's a list of terms. All right, I want to talk about that first, just for a second here. It's just a great big giant list of terms, which most of them we did in quizzes or whatever. Um, now, I, I want to say this, you're not supposed to use every term, period, all right? But you should be able to use things like period, parallel period, symmetrical or asymmetrical period, um, you know, uh, if, if you're talking about little motives, you might call it a semi-phrase. Um, um, you know, uh, elision, th this happens over and over and over. Actually, there was another elision in that Beethoven. Uh, it'll, the, uh, the transition alighted with the end of the first theme, which I noticed as we were playing it. Um, but uh, uh, there, there, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff, and some of these things have nothing to do with it. But you might find a retrograde of something that he's playing in the development, then he plays it backwards, for instance. Uh, um, you might find, uh, you know, uh, that this is just, you know, you might, you might find something you think is linking material that gets us back to somewhere, all right, which is, which is fair. Uh, you might find something that's rounded binary form, and you should say that. You might find something that's ternary or binary. All right, ternary is three, binary is two again. So th this is just a list of terms to help you out so you don't have to go searching really hard in the book for terms, but you should be using terms that we've discussed in the, the during the, the course. Don't use other people's terms, all right? Use our book's terms, all right? Um, then I'm gonna say this. One of the best things to do is quote our book. All right. By quoting our book, there's nothing wrong with quoting our book because that's what we studied. And you can find other sources, too. That's not a problem. But if, for instance, you're going to say, like, uh, this is a parallel period and you can go, boom, a parallel period is blah, 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 blah. All right. That takes up some sentences. And, and, and then you just cite it and quote our book. All right. Um, things like that. Um, so let me see, I'm gonna get out of this a little bit. And uh, I wanna close this, uh, minimize. All right, so this is the, this is the directions for the paper. Um, and you can download and read it, but this, this is basically a paper on Sonata form and it says, now, I'm going to do this different because we're not seeing this very well. Um, let me do this. And let me do this. Are you seeing the paper now? Yes. That I just highlighted, not not the whole module. So you just highlighted the paper itself, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Good. Because we can read it a little bit better. But anyways, it's five seven pages, no less. You need to do five and seven pages. Now this doesn't include references and citations. Okay. You can you, you just put a number one, number two, number three, and you go to the back at the end and put them all in. All right. Um. Anyways, uh, you're 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 doing a type paper describing the form structure and compositional techniques of Mozart Symphony Number no. Forty Fourth Movement. Note this is sonata form, so don't say, find something that says it's some other form of sonata. We are really just analyzing the sonata form elements. If someone says it's something else, that's cool, but we're we're analyzing the sonata form elements, not the sonata rondo. So in other words, there are two sonatas. Well, there's more than two, but but Sonata Allegro, and then then there's something called Sonata Rondo, which they just, in the, for the most part, but not always, 
try to take Rondo, a sonata form, and put it into the form of Rondo. So uh, you are analyzing the, the sonata form elements. Uh, uh, so what I've got on my door is a Roman numeral analysis of the entire thing. I didn't tell you where the main phrase was. I didn't tell you where the cadences were. I didn't tell you any of that. But I gave you Roman numerals for everything. All right. Now, if you find somebody else's score and they have slightly different Roman numerals, use mine. All right. It isn't going to be too far off. Um, in the development, somebody might have analyzed some things a little bit differently, different than I did. Just so you know, um, they might not have put as as many. Um, modulations in it or they might have stuffed in more things like that but generally it's pretty close to the same because it's mozart and it's pretty straightforward all right uh, as opposed to beethoven especially as you get further into his music and any sonata form in the uh romantic period of music uh, which we didn't get a opportunity to look at we were going to look at a schubert piece which is way out there but because of the way this is working now online and the, the specific problems we have we we don't get through enough uh, as much material um, all right so again use this Roman numeral analysis there are various points of view uh, so use the provided Roman numeral analysis only all right y your paper should also include two graphs um, of the work one that has the macro details all right include the intro if it's relevant if, if this piece has an introduction or not but the macro details is just you know you got like the exposition you got the intro if you have one the exposition uh the development the recapitulation um you don't have to break the exposition down but it really just gives you the large look at the exposition you can write c in this case g and then it ends um, and things like that. And I gave you a, a sample of that um, uh, in the last class period. And then you, you, the other one is the micrograph, all right? Um, let me read this all again. Uh, the macrograph, include the intro of this relevant and any other, and another that has micro details of the exposition as the, as the analysis provided with the structure and form written in it, i.e. exposition, recapitulation, uh, things like that. that. That doesn't sound very well, and I'm really sorry about this. I might have to modify this. Basically, you're doing two graphs. You're doing a big one. you got the exposition, the development, the recapitulation, and just the measures and maybe some key areas give you an idea of what's going on. And then you have the micrograph. And again, that micrograph, is only, you only have to do the exposition, all right? So it's something that looks a little bit like this. It might have a little bit more details than this. I did this pretty fast this morning. Um, uh, but just so you know, I have another piece of paper that looks like this, which is how I started it, um, by just writing out some measure numbers and things like that. And by doing that, then I could go into the, so I had all the measure numbers for the first theme, second theme, then I could draw these things and then go find the cadences and things like that. But this is the micro graph, okay? And you only need to do it for the exposition. I wouldn't do one for the development, but I would consider doing one for the recapitulation. All right, it's gonna be similar to this. And this, and, and if you do this one for the recapitulation, then you could compare it and maybe some of these things have changed and it makes it more obvious, all right? But it's unnecessary, all right? So just so you know. So I'm gonna reshare what I was sharing. Um, desktop. Um, well, let me do this. I got rid of that, so now you should be seeing me. Okay, here we are. Uh, I think, let's go new share. All right, are we back to seeing this? 
Yep. yep. Okay, cool. All right. I just want to make sure. All right. Um, and again, I said here, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this and I might reword this, okay? And it will say revised. I have also recommended that you do the uh, one for the recapitulation, but again, you don't have to. Um, specific points described in your paper must include measure numbers, and then you should indicate them on the score, all right? You could say, the cadence is between here and here. I don't want to know that. I want to know exactly what you're talking about. Or the thematic material is uh, is in this the flute in measure 46 that then we find in the development in these measures right here. You would just circle those things, all right? You don't have to write this. Is the, you circle them. Because if you say 46 in the flute, I go up and look at it, all right? Um, so don't leave me searching, all right? Uh, if you say something that's important, put it in the score. In other words, theme one starts here. Cadences are here. Uh, you know, cadence is here on this step, then you write five one right there on these measures. You know, and I know that, all right? Uh, transition starts right here. And, and you get that, and you get all that from your macro graph. The transition starts right here and ends right there. From your micrograph, in this case, the transition starts here and ends here, so you know what you're talking about. All right. Um, all right. So, um, you may use sources. You must document them. Undocumented sources will lead to a failing grade. So, don't don't use stuff and don't tell me you you uh, and and not tell me you used it. All right, there's no problem using sources. You just need to let people know and show them where you used it. Um, uh, you should use sources that are verifiable. And I'm just going to say that Wikipedia isn't always the most verifiable source because anyone in theory can go change it. All right. Um, although I think it's gotten a lot better over the years. Don't get me wrong. Okay, but I would avoid using Wikipedia. All right. I would look at our book, look around. Um, there, are, there are some other sources of this. But remember, if they go off into a tangent that has nothing to do with what we've talked about in Sonata Forum, don't follow that tangent. All right. Um, so there's, uh, I, I said not verifiable. Um, they may be in print or they may be on the web. Web sources should not be like, ask whatever that guy's name is. I don't know if that's still going on. Ask somebody. Or a dictionary that anyone can add their own opinions, which is Wikipedia. all right? So remember um, what I discussed in class. Do not put out cadences that are not really there, all right? You're going to hear these cadences. Uh, well, the Mozart's goes pretty fast, so you might not, but I pointed out everything in there just so you know already. Um, there's plenty of things to point out. One page or more may be devoted, one page no more, may be devoted the, to the historical background. All right, there's plenty to write about. When I say historical background, you might want to uh, think about, uh, sure, you could say Mozart was born in blah, 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 and that's about four sentences. And then the historical background would really be, um, the time period he wrote this, where he was in his life with this. Um, uh, symphony number 40, I think that's like one of the later symphonies. <laughs> so you could you could mention something like that. Uh, and um, so it says there's plenty to write about. You should find the big details, um, which are the macro details, and before looking for the smaller aspects. Um, Again, you're going to need to read this because I'm kind of running out of time, but attached is a list of terms that may be helpful. That's the other one. Please read your paper out loud and make sure it makes sense. Please go over the instructions before turning in the paper. I'll be honest with you. Here's how you should start. You should start listening to the piece of music, listening to the piece of music. I do it three or four times and seriously listen to it looking through the score. Then I would start listening to it and start marking the things that you hear. Okay. Um, and uh, and then after a while, a after doing that, you, you need to come up with the good old graph, all right? And then from the graph, the paper becomes easy. If you have a crappy graph, it becomes horrible. Anyways, 
Uh, listen, r right here, it says it's right here, is this paper is typed in Microsoft Word, the paper is double spaced. Uh, this is the old Microsoft Word. The new one puts a smaller typeface in and uh, the margins are between lines are smaller and then your paper is like twice the size, all right? So I recommend that you just do this, all right? Uh, so with one and a quarter inch margins on the right and the left side, one and a quarter inch, all right? One inch top to bottom, all right? And you should use Times New Roman 12 point. This is exactly what this is right here. Uh, justification should be left. The settings are, are the default settings in the old version of Microsoft Word, okay? And I've been telling that to people for, for years on end because I don't want you to have to write twice as much, okay? Uh, you need to download this paper to turn it in or upload it to turn it in. Uh, and both graphs in your score uh, are due on Monday, November 16th at noon, 12 p.m. in my mailbox under my office door, which is most of you know it's room four in that little teeny hallway next to the little theater. Uh, don't give me a late paper. I still have to read these things, all right? So um, make, and I'm just saying this, make backups of your paper as you're working on it. An easy way to do this is to email it to yourself. Email a copy of it to yourself, it's in your email, all right? After each time you're working on it. So if for some reason you lose it, if you're working on it in a lab and somebody else is using your computer that you wanna use, that it's on, you can always just go to another computer, go to your email, bring it down, all right? So after every time you work at it, I would send it back to that. If you're using your own computer, I would still be sending it to um, your email because you don't want to lose what you've done. So uh, it says four items, and I just removed one of the items, and I didn't realize it said four items. It's only three items. Because usually I make people print it out and also give it to me. But since we're not in that mode right now, so the electronic copy must be uploaded. So it should say four or three. So this is something I have to fix. That's worth 70%. Uh, here is the turn it in information. Uh, turn it in information, the class ID and the enrollment key is form, capital F, fall, capital F, 2020, which is form class fall 2020. So I'm assuming you all have done this in some case or another. The score in all items discussed in class is 15%. The graph is 15%. So if you have a crappy graph, you're hurting for certain. And the paper really is 70% of the grade, all right? So the last thing I have here, so you should be seeing this right here, command minus, 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 minus. Um, and then there's right here, there is a, the video that we listen to, and it actually has the score in it. Um, actually has a score in it, so that might help you follow along. But with uh, with the symphony number one, it's like one, two, one, two. It's it's kind of like boom, boom, but you're on the next measure, boom, boom, boom. So you, it's I, I find it easier to follow with the rhythm. All right. So. I want to remind everybody that there is a recital at 11 o'clock. You should have got a link to it if you're not going personally to it, all right? Dr. Goldman, you know, he's got that attendance thing with the recitals and all that. So please go. So all of, I am going to send out an announcement through um, Canvas that says if you are not on campus or not near campus, you need to send me your your address all right so i can mail it to you but i'm almost sure that everybody's on campus except bremi all right just so you know but i'm not completely sure anyways those those scores are on my door right now i put them in there actually two days ago there's enough scores that you can take two do not take four six eight giving them to other people that then come and take more and then we're going to run out take two for yourself one that you can write all over and one that you can turn in. All right. So everybody have a good day. Any questions? Um, outside of class, yeah. Well, not outside of class, but outside of this um, project. This, uh, all paper. right. We'll, stop. well, we won't talk about that at the moment. So are we good, Jacoby? Are we good, uh, Mr. Greer? Yeah, we good. All right.
if I have any other questions uh, in the future after I read the whole revised, you know, explanation everything, I'll let you know. No problem. Contact contact me and Cam is the easy way. Don't you don't have to wait to get the class. All right. All right. We're out of here. All right. So you can get out of here. Uh, and I'm gonna pause this, Remy. And what's your question? Uh, did you just get, did you get my email or get my um my part for stage two? Yeah, I I, I think uh all right. Well, it's not, yeah, this morning when I looked at my phone, it said you turned in something for stage two. I haven't looked at it. Okay. I, I had this class do it. I will be looking at it. And okay. today is not a good day for me to have a conference, all right? But Friday is a better day. Are you going to be home in the evening? Um, you I, will. No, I'll be, at, I'll be at work 12 to 8. 12 to 8 at night? Yeah. Okay, so we could have a, we're in the same time zone. We, in theory, could have a nine o'clock yeah. appointment. All right. If that, if that works out well, please email me and tell me nine o'clock Friday. All right. So so I know that we, so we can look at it together. Okay? Okay. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Trevor. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right, so let's see. Stop share. Um, I'm ending the session.